Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And first of all, I've got to say a very big thank you to everybody for commenting on yesterday's video that I did when I was asking whether you want to see just hard puzzles or a hard and easy mix or more easy puzzles. Um, not just because so many people commented, which was very kind, but also because most of the comments seem to suggest we're getting it right at the moment and doing a few straightforward ones. Still pretty tough, classic Sudoku sometimes, but helping with the techniques and then working through some pretty difficult puzzles too. So we're gonna carry on and uh, thank you very much for those comments. Thank you also to everybody who's tried to participate already in the extra wallet competition working on Kurt Hugo Schneider's tricky six by six puzzle and sending us an explanation of their solution. Really, there have been some phenomenal efforts, some interesting ways of thinking about the puzzle. The response has been, again, just much more than we anticipated. And um, it makes it feel like there's a real community, a puzzle community out there. And um, in these times, in these strange, isolated times, I think that's very welcome. So thank you very much. Thank you for just watching the videos, if that's all you're doing as well. So we're very grateful. Um, anyway. Today I'm going to be looking at a triple hybrid puzzle by Thomas Johnson or Johnson who we did a puzzle of his before and he sent us a second one and I hear it's pretty good. So this one has three constraints. It is as well as being following the regular Sudoku rules we've got diagonals as you can see that are the numbers one to nine on each. We've got some sandwich Sudoku clues around the outside which for the relevant row or column show the sum of digits between the one and the nine in that row or column and there's also an anti-knight constraint so digits can never be a knight's move apart in the grid the same two digits so that's what we've got gonna have a go at this let's get cracking obviously before watching you can try it on the um, link below the video so where do we start we've Simon's comment when he saw it was, there's so many constraints, it must be easy. I'm suspecting it's not right. The 35 is always a good place. There must be a one and a nine at the end of that. Um, I'm gonna use the color system to mark cells that can't be one or nine. Um, and I'm gonna mark them green just because that's what I've got used to. I know there's one commenter out there who really objects to green being used for cells where Something can't go because of traffic lights, I think. Sorry, mate, that's the way it is. So these other cells in columns one and nine, uh, actually that one's not right, but those other cells can't contain a one or a nine. Sorry, it's a six in column one. So six has to be covered in one or two cells by the sum of six. It could either be six or two and four, that's why the other one or nine in the column must be two or three cells away. And a 12 sum in column nine has to be done in two or three cells. So the white cells where one and one or nine could be there. Um, 29 is another large number. And anytime your number's over 26, you can actually block off the three central cells because they can't contain a one or a nine. Anything over 26 has to be at least five digits long. And we've got a 28 and a 27 as well. That's interesting. Okay, so we know that the one, is, actually, yes, this is even better. In fact, they're both better. I just told you that a sum larger than 26 has to take up at least five cells. So in fact, in this 28 row, we know exactly which five cells, gotta be those five. So the one or a nine are in the cells there and there. So that's pretty much given. Now, those happen to be the two columns with no clues in, possibly not surprisingly. Now the 27 has to have five cells. So those four could have six cells. So one or both of those have to be green, but we don't know which way around. Um, now the eight clue up the middle has to be one or two cells. So there are a couple of 
greens we can put in. The one can't reach all the way to the edge of the grid. Um, ah, and this 29 clue has to have a one or a nine in one of these two cells, clearly to fit five cells in. And that makes two one or nines in the box already. So we can green out the corner ones. Now it might be time to think about the diagonals. Remember, there's already a nine on the diagonals, but they're both going to need a one as well. So where's the one on this leading diagonal? It's got to be in one of these two cells. Um, I'm going to put one into the corner of those to show that. Um, if it was here, the nine couldn't be here because that zero clue would need another one or nine to the top or bottom of it. So if it was here, the nine would be here, the one would be there, the nine would be there. It's possible. Um, yeah, can't rule that out. How about here? Is there anything we can rule out? 16 has to be at least three digits. So that would be the central three. Couldn't have a one or a nine. I don't know. Let's just leave it as one of those two cells needs a one. I don't know which one yet. See if there's anything else. So one of these two cells has a one or a nine. Um, and there's six as the outside. 35 is the sum of the digits from two to eight. So the numbers outside the one and nine in this column have to add up to six, which means they could either be one digit a six or a two and a four. That's not proving anything either. Um, what else can we find then? Uh, 17. No, I was just wondering if the 17 proved there had to be... Oh yes, the zero clue proves that this cell can't be a one or nine because that would need a one or a nine either side of it and they're both green. So. We can fill in the one in the central box. It must be here. Now, 17 needs at least three um, non one or nine digits to make it up. So the nine could be at one end or the other, but those are the two rows with no clues. We can at least green in the rest of this central row. Now we've got one and nine in it. That means that one of these is a one or a nine, and one of these. Hmm. That's okay, that's quite interesting. One of these being a one or a nine. If this was a one or a nine, the zero clue here means this would be a one or a nine. If this was a one or a nine, We'd already have two one or nines in this row, and this couldn't be a one, so this would be a one or a nine. In fact, does that prove that has to be? Yeah, that does, I think, prove this has to be. Well, it certainly proves it has to be a one or nine. Oh, yes, and there's a nine on the diagonal, so it's a one. Okay, that is clear. Um, I'm just going to run through that again, because that was a little complicated. Looking at these two cells, where because of the 27 clue, we know there has to be a one or a nine. If this was one of them, the zero clue, which means that the one and nine have to be next to each other in the column, would mean this was a one or nine. And, and it can't be a nine because there's already a nine on the diagonal line. If this was a one or a nine, it would mean that all of these other cells in the row, in the column, couldn't be. And therefore, the one that we'd placed in one of those two cells would have to be here. So both, way ra both ways round, they prove this one. Now, we don't know which way around it is, so we can't fill in which one of them it is yet. Uh, but the zero clue here, as I say, means this can't be um, one of the one or nines. The 16 clue means all of these can't be. Uh, could 16 be five digits? No, it couldn't. That's important. So I'm looking at these five digits. They're, they have to add up to more than 16. So the nine must be in one of these two cells. In fact, it can't be in this one because that's on a line with a nine, the diagonal. 
and this is too far. So the nine is here. Now that's great. Um, let's just green out the cells around it. And what that means for column one is there's only one cell left which can be the other one or nine. So we can put that in there. Column two's now got its ones and nines. In fact, we can start unwinding which of one and nine these are. So that's a one, that's a nine. Um, still don't know for these. No, we don't know for that. Now, one of these is a one. Ah, it's clearly not this one because that's got green cells either side and a zero clue in the row. So it's a one here, lovely. Um, and 29 means there has to be something outside the one and nine. So the nine has to be here. In fact, it has to be a six outside. Now we've got an eight clue in this row and that's either one or two cells. So we can green the ones over on the left. And now, oops, didn't get that right. Don't know why I did. Okay, now remember the diagonal. Which of these diagonal cells has the one? Well, it's got to be the one at the end because it's the only one that's not green. So the doing the green stuff really has helped. Now we can fill in the ones and nines that we've got. Um, that box has both of its numbers. That column has its. Uh, still don't know about the top and bottom. And this zero clue hasn't been fulfilled either. It could still be those two or those two. That's quite amusing. We know that the eight is a two cell clue in the middle, but don't know which ones. There's a sort of symmetry about this that is quite appealing, but Ah, look, this cell cannot be a one or a nine because it can see both nine and one. So that has resolved this box. Sorry, that should have been a bit more obvious perhaps. Nine there, this column's complete. So we can put a one in here. Um, that row is complete. This is a zero clue, so that's a nine. And these two boxes have to be green. So the one in row two must be here. The nine in that box must be there. This is green and that's all the one and nines placed. And we used the diagonal. We haven't actually, maybe I should have done, haven't used the anti-night constraint at all. It's possible that would have sped things up somewhere. So apologies for basically forgetting that to date, but it certainly seems to work as far as ones and nines are concerned. Right, so now what can we fill in from the clues? So we've got a six clue up there, so that's easy to complete. We've done the 29 effectively. These have to be two, three, four, five, eight, seven in some order. 17, that's quite a medial number. Don't know whether that's eight is two or six or three, five. The zeros are done. This could be seven, five or eight, four. Okay, looking at the acrosses, that has to be an eight. 28 here means seven outside, but that could be two, five or three, four. We've done the 35 effectively. Ah, 27 here, we can put an eight outside. Zero here is done, that leaves this 16. Now that can be two, three, four, seven, or two, three, five, six. Um, don't know which. Okay, now what else can we deduce? Um, it didn't, that didn't get us many immediate digits filled in. Oh, that's 17 using this eight, another nine. Mm, nine's a very intermediate total. Right, six and six we've placed here. So one of these two is a six. I guess we might start needing to use some knight's move stuff now. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Eight is seeing that square, and as a knight, it's seeing that cell. And that same eight sees that cell. This eight sees that cell and that cell. So eight on this diagonal has to be in box one, which is quite a surprising find, but interesting. Um, not sure what else that's telling us. I guess 
Oh, well, it's quite useful for eight in the central box. Okay, so this eight is ruling out those three. That eight is ruling out that one and that one by a knight's move. So eight here has to be in one of those two. Um, sorry, in the corner is where I should put that. And that's where I should have put those two. So apologies about that. There we go. Um, but what else is that telling us? Is the diagonal much more use than this? I don't think so. I mean, that we were a bit lucky with that eight to find. I can't imagine there's much more constrained than that. Ah, oh, that eight is actually very useful. Okay, that has worked out how this 12's made up. Made up. It's got to be five and seven. Um, right, and this 28 clue we worked out has to have seven outside the one and nine. So the outies, as we call them, are five and two, and that fixes the seven. So we are getting a bit of traction and action there. Still don't know about those, that 17. Hmm, it's a bit less uncertain now. Well, no, there's still four possibilities. That's too many to really work on. Eight's done. Crikey, are we going to really have to use some knight's move or diagonal stuff next? I don't know. Um... Okay, it's interesting that in this row, where does the eight go? Not in any of those three cells, because we've got the eight there. So it must go on one of the diagonals. If it went on this diagonal, in that cell, then eight could no longer be here because of the diagonal, or here because of the ninth move. Wow. That's a nice find. So eight in row three has to be here. We can get rid of the eight in the corner there. Um, eight's in one of those two cells. Wow, that was quite a surprising find. Nine, five. But these could be any of seven, six, four, three, apart from that one. Now those are both still possible. Eight in this bottom box must be down here somewhere. Now, as we observed before, eight is not in any of those cells or that one. Oh, I don't know, it's not that helpful. Ah, eight in this box. Right, those three cells look like they have to contain the eight, but because that eight rules out those three, but this eight rules out that one, and this eight by a knight's move rules out that one, so we can put an eight in there. That's fixed the eight in the center box, and that gets us the eight there. That by a knight's move rules out this cell. Um, eight must be in one of these three over here, but I don't know which one. So maybe the eights at the bottom are not so straightforward. Oh, we still haven't resolved those two either. Okay, there's quite a few eight possibilities down there, but at least we get it in up in the top half of the grid mostly. Now seven here, put seven in one of those two. Um, Hmm, are there any clues we haven't really used? Another nine there, eight there. Okay, the eight here has to either be two, six, or three, five. And we do at least have two of those possibilities ruled out. So it's either three, five, or six, two. Um, how about, I'm very tempted to think the diagonals are gonna be more helpful still, but we might have used those as much as we can for the moment. It would be good to find... Okay, now we decided this was 2, 3, 4, 7 or 2, 3, 6, 5. So the 8 in that row must be either here or here. Doesn't really help yet, does it? No, I don't think that's getting us anywhere. Um, 
Hmm. Okay, what else can we find? Okay, this five is stopping it being there, there and there by knight's moves. To know if that's very helpful. Oh, six. Six is ruled out from those three. So, well, at least it puts a six in one of these three. Um, I don't know. I don't know that that's really helping again. Where can we go? Two here is ruled out from those by the knight's move constraint. Those three would all stop two being here, but that's not very significant. They'd also stop two being here, but that doesn't help. Almost helps actually, almost puts two on the diagonal in this box but not quite for sure. Wow, we're gonna to have to find something else. I might be missing something fairly obvious about knight's moves perhaps. Okay, let's have a look at this six. That's ruling out those two cells and that one. So six is in one of those three and also one of these three in that box. Um, could be here, in which case it would have to be here. Then it would be on the diagonal. Well, not necessarily there, it could be there. Let's see, well, there might be something going on with sixes. Okay, how about fives? Fives have to be in one of those cells. Because of that five. Um, I don't know, no, this isn't yielding much. What am I missing, folks? What am I missing? Another nine here. But that could be three, six. It doesn't have to be two, seven, or five, four. Seven, five. No, I don't know. So, Simon, this is not as simple as you imagined it would be. Um, it's a clever puzzle, all right, but not making much progress. Now, what is there? Come on, there must be something more straightforward. Seven there is restricting that and that cell from being sevens, but seven could be anywhere there. I don't know, maybe I'm going to pencil mark in those twos that we worked out. Um, and therefore these twos that they cause. If it was there, it would have to be there. If it was there, it would have to be there. If it was there, that would fix this cell. But I don't know that that's a major step either. It'd be nice to know which way around that was. It goes without saying. Um, ah, this is tricky. Oh, there we go. Crikey, that took some doing. Okay, six here. We saw this earlier. Six sees all those cells. So therefore the six in this box is in one of those three. Now, all of those cells, either by knight's move or direct, see this cell, which can't be a six. Now we know these two can't be a six either. So six is therefore on the diagonal in this box. <sighs> That's hard. Um, 
Anyway, that is very useful because once you take six off this diagonal down here, there's only one place left for a six, which is here. So we can get rid of the six from there. Now, two has to be on the diagonal here. Um, just while we're there, that also rules out this from being a two because that can see both of those cells. Now, two being on the diagonal means what? Means that two has to be in one of those three. Um, is that helpful? Two's also in one of those three. Uh, it can't be... Oh, that's a lovely pattern, actually, in a knight's move. Two is locked in those two boxes into those six cells. But in fact, it can never be here because that sees all three of these cells by a knight's move. And it can never be here because that sees all three of those. So we can actually take two out of those end boxes. Two's locked into twice into a little two by two shape there. Um, is that helping us? Come on. Surely this is giving us something to go on in the middle. Now, two's not there or there. It's clearly not there because there is a two in one of those two. So, where's the two in the central box? It must be in one of those three cells. Um, but it could be on the diagonal or it could not. Oh. So close to a full breakthrough. Not quite there yet. That's quite amusing as well that there are literally no threes or fours given in the grid yet. So we're still going to have to work those out from the sandwich clues at some point. Now, have the sandwich clues advanced at all in what we've done? We need to get a two in there somewhere. But it could be there or it could be in this box. Um, 28, 8, no, they're all done. This 17 still very unresolved. <sighs> if 2 was there, 7 would be there. That's not very useful. And that 8 clue, there's just not much else to come from the sandwich clues. It's quite amazing, especially when you consider that that Three and four still has to be resolved by them. Um, crikey, where do we go next? I thought we'd got a big breakthrough there. It hasn't quite worked out that way. If that was five, because of that five, five would have to be on this diagonal, but there's a lot of possibilities for that. That's not very useful. These two possibilities, the same, it would be the same thing if that two, if that was a two, then the same pattern as for sixes here would apply, and that couldn't be a two by exactly the same reasoning. So they would be twos. Um, this would be a two. That's all possible. Where would two go in the central box? It would have to be here. Oh, they'd be, oh yeah, we've done the two up there. It's there, okay. That's still all right. Two. Ah, oh, no, that's not all right. There's nowhere to put a two in this box. So this is not a two. I mean, that's a slight chain there, but it gets the job done. Two there, two there. Let's get rid of the two in those two possibilities. Okay, two here looks useful. It's ruling out those cells and by knights move those ones. So two has to be in one of those. Um, Two's on the diagonal. That doesn't prove anything. 
Ah, these three have to add up to 14 for the clue now. Um, but that's still possible as either 356 or 347. Not sure. Um, Over here now? No, it's much less constrained. Ah, there is a two in one of those two, so that's ruling out those three cells. So two in this box is in one of those three. But, well, they do all see that one, but that's already seen by another two, so that's not helpful. Um, does it matter if that was a two? No, not particularly. Okay, sixes. That can't be a six because it sees both the possibilities of six here. So we can forget that one. There and there could be sixes. Then this would have to be a six. That's really quite likely. How about if that was a six, then this would be a six. Ah. Oh. Then there's very limited sixes in the central box because of those three and the knight's move. Six would be here. Um, where would six be in this top box? It would have to be here and here. That's possible. And here, avoiding the diagonal that it's already on. Yeah, that does work, so that's quite likely. Maybe we can rule out this six, that six. That puts a six here. Um, one of those two are not the diagonal, so there and there. Wow, it's a completely different arrangement, but it does also work, which is slightly frustrating because I was hoping to come up with something that was impossible with one of the six variants. And neither, or that both of them pointed at that cell, but in fact, one of them uses that cell, this, this original variant, I think, uses this cell as a six. Ah, oh, so frustrating. Has to be there. Then it has to be there. Oh, okay, that doesn't quite rule anything in or out. Putting a six here would be helpful because we'd know about the three five combination. Now, oh, what was the other possibility? Did that also have a six in the top row here? Yeah, I think it did. Let's just check it again. Six there. Um, six there there and there yeah and a six here so there has to be a six in these three cells so they have to be three five six that gets rid of six there I mean that really is pushing what you could expect to find now that does at least enable us to put a four in this cell which is effectively a blind single, uh, naked single. We've got three, five, six, nine, two, one in the row, eight, seven in the column. Four there. Ooh, this can't be. That's two or three. Um, these two are eight and seven in some order. Don't know which. Now we've got three, five, six here, one, nine, two and eight are restricted a bit, but where's four or seven? Don't know. No real extra help with those. Oh gosh, okay. Putting the four in there because we took the six out is useful. This six has taken this six out of the game actually. So we can put six in here. Now this is, wasn't that on only one of the paths I can't remember okay so that's two or three does that tell us any more about sixes not really it could still be in any of those three hmm 
nine, four, six, so eight. Eight, both see this cell. Both those possibilities for an eight rule out this cell from being an eight. Um, and this has now been ruled out from being an eight. So this one's ruled out because of the diagonal. So eight is in one of those two. Put it in the corner. And that means this one's ruled out. Crikey. So we can put eight there and we can resolve the twos. Get rid of two from that one. Six, three, four in that box still to go. Can we finish off eights? No. No, they're all very low down, aren't they? Right. Um, sandwich clues, am I missing anything there? Still that 17 and this eight to sort out. I can't see it either way. If that was three, five, this would have to be a six. If that was two, six, this would be a two. No, I don't know. I don't think that's going to give us anything. But let's just go back. That's a six, then that's a six, that's a six. Now, Not sure there. Oh, six at the top here has to be on that diagonal, not the other. So that gives a six there, if that's a six. And the other way around, if that's a six, we've got six there and there. And then in the center, it is constrained to there. So that becomes a six. So at least we know this one can't be. I don't know, that doesn't. Oh, that is important. Now this cell has to be three or five. So this pair can't be three and five. Wow, what a weird thing. Okay, so now we can sort out the sixes. I think all of them, I believe. Yes, this central box takes one there. Crikey. What a convoluted finish. I mean, there may be an easier way through this puzzle. There really might. But this is the way I've taken. Two is now there because it can't be there anymore. That gives us two in one of these two. And it's got to be on the diagonal because the other box is on that diagonal. Two has not hit the diagonal. So two is there, okay. Two can't be here by the knight's move, so it must be here. That's not six anymore. Oops, not six anymore, that's not six. So we've got all the sixes in, have we got all the twos? Yes. So we've got a three, four pair up here. Surely, we yes, we can finish off this 17 clue now with sandwich. And that fixes the four, three pair that we just put in. Seven here. Now we've got a five and a four up here. Um, I do like it when these start finally giving up. But that one was very resistant. As I say, I might have been missing something somewhere. If you were shouting at the screen for ages because I was being dumb, well, I apologize. It can happen, and that's the beauty of live solving. Um, five and three there. They're disambiguated by that three on a knight's move, I think. That's four or seven. Six, two, one, oh, this is three, four, seven, and we can put them all in, I think. Three there. Or maybe we can't. Yes, four's on the diagonal, so that's seven. Um, what are the diagonals saying? One, six, four, five, nine, seven, two. Three, eight, and eight, six, three, nine, one, two. So we're gonna get five, four, and seven on. Oh, not sure yet. I'm sure everything is just straightforward. That's a four because of this four. Seven and eight can go in there. We can surely finish off this row, yes. Seven and eight, now we can do them. And now the diagonal's helpful. Four, five to go up in the corner. 
I say it's helpful. I don't actually know which way around they go, but that gives us seven and three. Ah, <clears throat> oh, yeah, that cell is the last in its column. So there we go. What a nice puzzle. Thanks, Thomas, for sending that. Um, thank you for following along with me and bearing with me in the middle. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.